The best demand forecast we have is that within about 45 to 60 more days, unless we have very abnormally warm northern hemisphere winter, we will have the record high usage of oil the world's ever had. If we hit 88, and all we can do is produce 73 of crude, and 12 of liquids is the best we can do, how do we get from 85 to 88? We drain stocks. We have an enormous pool of oil inventories in our system. In the United States, we have over 300 million barrels of crude. We have, we have about 200 million barrels of motor gasoline. Uh, but all of those stocks, the vast, vast majority are line pack. I mean, our crude oil includes every barrel of crude in a tanker that enters U.S. waters. It's all the oil that's in the Alaska pipeline. It's all the oil, basically, that surrounds these refineries. It's, it's, it's working, work and process inventory. The usable finished product we have is now down to the lowest days we've ever done because demand's so high. At some point, if we're, if we're relying on stock draws as the way we fill a gap, then the most logical next step is we run into a regional shortage somewhere. And the regional shortage means someone runs out. And then, as we saw perfectly in 73, or, not, or the summer of 79, the consumer starts to hoard, tops up his tank. And that creates a little run on the bank. And we, in the United States, for instance, within a week or 10 days, could literally drain the system dry of motor gasoline. And we never have it filled back up, so we would overnight in the great driving experience in the United States and we'd be in social chaos. People all around the country, uh, you know, keep fire insurance on their homes. It's just a prudent thing to do. And yet I think statistically, even in California where we've had these horrendous fires, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's amazing what a small percentage of homes actually burn down. But that doesn't prevent people saying, I want fire insurance just to be able to sleep well at night. If we have an odds of what I'm talking about, up in the 50, 60, 70 percent, why aren't people worried about it? The single biggest terrorist threat we have is blowing up a tanker in the Straits of Malacca, where you have this 70 mile long, narrow channel where the tankers have to basically hole up at both ends until you have the small tides. That tanker route is basically 12 million barrels a day of oil going from the Middle East to feeding a very hungry Asia. Singapore, Australia, Japan, China, Korea. One tanker sunk in the middle of Malaysia Straits closes it down. Uh, how hard would that be to do? That's the single biggest instance of piracy on tankers. Uh, so, so, so that's a problem. Um, Mexico has an unbelievable problem on its hands. It's called the Cantorell field, second largest producing field in the world today. Cantorell peaked in May 2005. That happened to be the set the record too. And it's coming down like that. It's come down already from 2.2 million barrels a day to 1.4 last month. About three years from now, there's a very high risk that Mexico can no longer export oil and their economy can collapse. If their economy collapsed, we could see 30 to 50 million Mexicans crossing our border. Would we call out the National Guard or declare war on Mexico? I mean, these are, you know, these are Stephen King sort of things, but they're let, but they're driven by events that are going to happen. Hugo Chavez, really, unless he's joking, he cannot stand the United States. Uh, China is desperate for oil from any source they can get because they understand peak oil. Chavez, I could see very easily signing a contract and saying, we've just taken all the oil we used to send to the United States of America because we don't like the United States of America. We do love the Chinese, and it's now going to, to China, and our U.S. Navy, in a knee-jerk reaction, could put a blockade, and we'd be at war with China. So oil's the glue of our society, and, and natural gas is the glue of our heat, and it's in probably worse shape than oil. And so as we start into scarcity, Human behavior, which we have a rich history of, uh, is, you know, the bully tries to grab theirs first, and that's what leads to fistfights. You know, Texas is desperately short on feedstock for electricity, 
And I can see some Texans starting to say, you know what? We've never been thanked by California or New England for sending them all our natural gas. Keep it at home. And then, and then, and then California retaliating on Texas because we cut, we, we caused blackouts in California. Two or three years ago, we had a bona fide worry that didn't materialize because we had a mild winter of the low, very low heating oil stocks in New England. And so Chavez basically holds, holds a press conference uh, and, and has Joe Kennedy at his side and says, because I really admire New England, we're going to basically give a 40% discount of our heating oil to all the people that are poor. And he got, he got the best press in the United States you'd ever imagine. Now, they never figured out how they do that. They never announced how they, you know, who, who crossed the finish line of being poor versus non-poor. Uh, but, but he became a folk hero in New England. Thank you.